So welcome from Amsterdam at ThinksCon Amsterdam 2016. Uh, uh, with me, David Lee. David, uh, uh, what brings you to Amsterdam? Uh, I think well, ThinkComs. Uh, this is great. Um, I met with Peter uh, a few months ago in Berlin and then starting to learn about this ThinkComs and the what uh, what ThinkCom is uh, pitching, what ThinkCom is looking at uh, in terms of the open and transparent IoT. And that also come attached with the uh, rapid growing community. Uh, and it's got us very excited. So uh, quite interestingly, after the meetup in Berlin, um, I actually meet up with Peter uh, and Michelle again uh, in London, actually twice. And then through that, we talk about they want to come on, coming down to Shenzhen to look at, to see what Shenzhen is like. Uh, and two weeks ago, they make the trip. Um, so, but uh, uh, you're from Shenzhen, uh, and you have a background in in the maker community. Uh, um, this is about IoT. Is is there a link between IoT and the maker community? Yeah. So, I mean, for me, as the so my background is in uh, computer science. Uh, I've been working in internet industry for about twenty years. Um, I started the first maker space in China in two thousand and ten, uh, two thousand eleven. Uh, we started a, a research hub. Uh, based in Shanghai, with uh, Anna Greenspan of NYU and Sophia Lerner of um, University of Michigan. Um, we're really looking into what maker movement signify and how that is going to interact and uh, with China. So one of the things is the, I think a lot of people looking at the maker movement kind of as this hobbyist uh, pursuit of the interesting stuff. Uh, but to dig deeper. Uh, the entire maker movement is that awakening to all of us can now using the hardware as a solutions to problem. So just a knowledge to internet. Uh, 20 years ago when we got started with internet, it's the people look at internet as technology, but internet really signify is this, everybody can do this network connected system, which uh, whether that is blogging, whether that's providing service, whether that's e-commerce. Uh, it's not about the technology. It's about what happened when we have huge number of people who can actually leverage this global connectivity. Um, and same as make a movement. Make a movement is not really just uh, going back to a handcraft. I mean, DIY, handcraft, furniture makings, all of this has been around in the society for ages. Uh, what distinguishes maker movement from the traditional DIY is the maker movement is driven by digital. Uh, what I mean by driven by digital is the very iconic the, is the um, at the center of the maker movement that's this open hardware. So Arduino, circuit board, uh, digital interactions. Uh, on the second part is the digital fabrication. So now in order to get into making stuff, no longer I have to be in handy. Uh, I can just download the file, having the 3D printer or laser cutter, uh, just do it for me. Uh, with that, coupling with the open hardware, uh, people starting to put new things together. Uh, with that, people also share this on the internet. So once we have the sharing on the internet, more people can do it. Uh, more people will share, and more people share, more people can do it. So that's an exponential growth. But uh, really, it is not this uh, hobbyist pursuit. It's when we have at the age where the open source hardware, the most low, driving the cost of the hardware to be so cheap. Uh, no longer we need to do this as a professional project. No longer we have to do this as academic research. It can be a hobby. Uh, so looking at this, it's a, it's a grander uh, paradigm shift in terms of the who decided uh, this kind of what we would perceive as the um, high-tech device, uh, internet, uh, internet connected device, uh, who has the power to make the decisions, what, can, what would become real. Uh, so I think global movement, global maker movement is to awaken into that. Uh, for Shenzhen, uh, more interestingly, is a huge concentration of the electronic manufacturer industry there. 93% of the electronics in the world are produced in Shenzhen. 
uh, this is quite mind-boggling numbers. Uh, it's a city of 20 million, but it's responsible for electronics for 7 billion people. So out of that infrastructure, same kind of uh, very open sharing uh, ecosystem also emerge in Shenzhen, but it's uh, for commerce, it's for business, it's for entrepreneurship. Uh, and for the past few years, I think these two started to meet together. Uh, the global maker movement discovered Shenzhen, and Shenzhen actually discovered the global maker movement. Uh, I think for makers, uh, right now you can go to makerspace, um, realize one, realize a few prototypes. But in order to that, for that prototype to make actual impact, they have to scale. They have to turn into a thousand, ten thousand, uh, hundred thousands. Um, that scalability comes from interacting with Shenzhen. Uh, Shenzhen also needs the global makers because the infrastructure is huge. Uh, we, it can take, uh, it's going to take uh, the, the talent global kind of talent pool to emerge uh, to leverage these infrastructures. Right. Sorry, let me interrupt you there a little bit because uh, I, I believe that it's, it's very exciting what is happening uh, in Shenzhen. Uh, uh, but I want to go back a little bit to the, the Internet of Things uh, topic. How is that involved in, in the maker society and, and, and what is your role in that? Uh, so, yeah, so I think for the maker movement, for so Shenzhen is set up to do electronics. Now, right now, it's pretty much uh, everything internet connected. Um, for maker movement, I think the biggest opportunity is not. Uh, let's go back and just learn making a chair. It's integrating that connectivity, integrating that interactions into the chair and ask, what is this for? Uh, this is a, a tough question. This is not an easy to answer question. And we need as many people to go in and inquire uh, what it is. Uh, 